All right, folks, it is Georgia primary election day, a huge day out there in Georgia. And joining us this morning is First Coast News political analyst John Daigle. John, we always appreciate you waking up with this dark and early here <laughs> yes, on uh, Good Morning Jacksonville. Lots to get into, not a lot of time, of course, but I do want to first talk about this, the hopes for today, right? I'm sure everyone is hoping that people will actually show up to the polls instead of waiting until November. And I want to talk about the early voting numbers. They were higher than expected. Sure. I mean, we are seeing some good numbers on early voting, and that probably means that the overall voting will be up but still we're talking even even though they're up from 2022 say we're still talking probably about an under 20 percent turnout overall uh, including early voting any incentives to get out there and vote today as again instead of waiting until November it's very tough because the, the voters who come out for these primaries especially a, a summer primary like this uh, are not really reflective of what you'll see in November I mean you're you see hardcore partisan uh, usually very um, ideological voters who come out for these primaries and the results are not really reflective of what you might see when we have the general in November. You know there's some big races out there in Georgia in particular I want to talk about the Camden County Sheriff's race a lot of controversy surrounding that sure. one. There are some interesting races and in, there's two or three very interesting sheriff races that uh, are going to be decided today in Camden County just north of the Florida Georgia border. Um, there is a very interesting sheriff's race. The incumbent who has been, who First Coast News' is Riley Phillips has done some great coverage about, has had some controversy. He's being challenged by a couple of Republicans. His name, Jim Proctor, won't actually be on the ballot today, but we will figure out who will face him in November. How do you see that petting out? Well, I think the incumbent uh, has made a lot of reforms following some controversial stuff that happened last year, a shooting on I-95 and some problems in the jail. But he's made a lot of reforms and he looks pretty strong right now. We'll see who's going to face him in November, but it looks like November will be a, a good contest for the incumbent. And speaking of controversy, we know former President Trump continues to face legal battles and there's two people we're paying close attention to. We have uh, District Attorney Fannie Willis, who has been in headlines herself, as well as the Fulton County Judge Scott uh, McAfee. Now, both of them we know are involved in Trump's elections interference case. Both of them are on the ballot today. How do you see that playing yeah, out? Yeah, that's a really interesting because we're in the middle, obviously, of this of this nationally uh, um, covered trial. Both Fannie Willis and the judge uh, who is presiding over that case are both on the ballot. And of course, uh, Trump is on the ballot for November. So uh, there's a, be a lot of a national attention on that. Uh, should either of those um, of those candidates lose today, it really would shake up that nationally covered case. I'm, I'm glad you said that because it goes to my next question. A lot of folks want to know why should we even worry about today's primaries, right? But what we see today will affect what happens in November. Exactly how? Well, it, today it depends a lot on what type of candidates are going to be on the ballot mm -hmm. in November. It, it looks like a lot of very far-right candidates will probably emerge from the primary, which is typical. But that, uh, it, depending on who comes out for November, if if a less if more moderate candidates come out in November on the on the Democrat side, some of these Republican, these hard-right Republicans, could face a tougher challenge in November. John, we always appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk to you a little bit later after the show, so we can have more with you at noon today. Right now, though, we're going to turn things over to meteorologist Laura Rountenkrans.